Hello and welcome to Our Kids, brought to you by the Jefferson County Public Schools. I'm Ben Jackie. We have a lot of great stories for you this month. Our students are sharing their love of reading, they're learning financial literacy with the help of local judges and lawyers, and our preschoolers are prepping for success in kindergarten. Plus, we have these stories from our five-star high school student correspondents. JCPS students are getting a first-hand look on how experts chase storms. I'm Ballard correspondent Taylor Crane, and I'll have the story. Olmstead South recently shared a very unique program with the community at the new Southwest Library. Reading is the foundation of all learning. Middle schoolers from Valley Preparatory Academy trek to nearby Dixie Elementary to read books one-on-one -on -one with younger students. It was a chance for mentorship, camaraderie, and a shared love of reading. One sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. I am Destiny and I'm here to read a book to Mackenzie so she knows how to read and draw and write. On Friday he ate these five oranges but was still hungry. First we read The Very Hungry Caterpillar. On Saturday he ate through one piece of chocolate cake. This is part of my K-Tip project. I'm a first year teacher. Did you find this word? What word is this? We have to do some type of leadership project so I chose to work with a local elementary school, Dixie Elementary. And my kids, my seventh graders, are teaching the kindergartners at Dixie Elementary vocabulary words. After we read the book, he had to find the definition of the word nibbled and cocoon. She said nibbled and cocoon. And then she had to put a sentence of nibbled. So the first time I just read through it to let him get a feel of it, then the second time, I wanted him to see if he could find the word. And she did. Before they come over, we have five books that they're going to read throughout the year. And the seventh graders read the book. They look at the vocabulary words. They collaborate with the teachers at our school. We have click, clack, moo cows that type, Pete the cat, I love my white shoes, and llama llama red pajamas. No, the caterpillar ate them. Well, my kindergartners were very excited about it because they just like to be around people. The seventh graders, I don't know that what, if they knew what to expect being with kindergarten students. My kids, last time they responded so well, ever since they've been begging to come back. The younger kids, you know, it's a time for them to interact with the older kids, getting someone that they can almost like look up to. And I focus on that a lot with my kids, you know. These kids look up to you. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and popped. Well, so that's helped with our behavior as well. It was fun. I have four younger sisters and brothers, so I'm used to it. It was just, I didn't know if I was like, because I had never worked with somebody that wasn't my sister or brother. So like, it was still kind of, I was still kind of nervous. Some of them were very, very excited to work with the younger kids, and some of them were very nervous. Like, I, I don't know how to act with a little kid. So it's kind of teaching them social skills as well. So the ones that don't have younger brothers or sisters or anything like that, they're getting to interact with younger kids. So. It adds variety, and the kids want to impress. And when you have someone that you don't know, you want to show them the things that you can do. And it's really exciting to have an adult come in and read to you if you're a kindergarten student. It's just something special. You know, you get into the same routine, you have the teacher and the same kids, and you have something new and exciting. So it's just a good opportunity to meet someone new and develop a relationship with someone older than you. They look up to us. Okay. They, do so what do you think it means? they think they're a big deal. It's the event that asks the question, if, IF. The Idea Fest provides more than 350 high school students the opportunity to share creative and innovative ideas as they become college and career ready. And our kids showed their ideas have no limits. The JCPS Idea Festival is an innovative stage for high school students to present ideas they're really passionate about to their fellow peers from all over the district. These ideas can range from minority rights to wearable technology. We all should be advocating for our history. So today is the second annual JCPS Idea Festival at Gaines. So our theme is interconnectivity. So we're all, they're all kind of social, most of them are like social issues. So they kind of connect, like something that you're gonna always see in your everyday life, something that these all, all of these students can connect to and relate to. So we all come here and you know, we uh, share our ideas with uh, other fellow classmates and you know, we learn a lot of stuff. Like we just learned about uh, some technology. Like you can put, it's like a wristband, and then you basically just control your uh, digital environment on a computer, game software, and it's really getting big. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. You know, this is where we've been, and the big question is where are we take I want to go into computer science myself, so it was pretty cool seeing what he was doing and what's going on with that technology. It's really fun to see how 
JCPS students embrace this and bring ideas that are as good as what you see on the professional idea festival stage, if you will. So what's important is, is that students understand the importance of breakthrough and innovation. This is wonderful. I, I... Like politicians, you don't really see kind of interacting with teenagers. And so to be able to see that, it's really inspiring. Well, we're hoping that they're going to learn from it. And when the present presenters tell them like, okay, you go do this, we're hoping that they're going to be inspired and actually want to make those changes. Like we're hoping that they're going to go sign Taylor's petition and that they're going to go ask for a programming class, for, like Alex said. Like watching Alex's presentation, uh, that sort of just got my mind moving about getting internships or something. The best students from these schools are here watching the best presentations that we've come up with. This is helping me basically motivate me to see what other people are doing, help me do what I'm doing. Idea Fest doesn't end with the event itself. Fern Creek correspondent Paige Sheeler shows us how one teacher is bringing the lessons from Idea Fest into the classroom. It's common for a JCPS student to have a great idea, but what might not be so common is the opportunity for them to share it with hundreds of their peers at the same time. Central High School's drumline set the tone with the high energy display of their musical talent. Louisville Male High School's a cappella group Bulldog Beat ended the morning session on a high note. Y Pass closed the Idea Festival with a dance performance ending with a standing ovation. Fern Creek's Global Issues teacher, Joe Franzen, uses aspects from the Idea Festival in his classroom. As a teacher, I have the privilege of being able to take young people to the Adult Idea Fest and also the JCPS Idea Fest run by, uh, run by students. And I'm amazed every single year at the way that these young people internalize the ideas, they think about them and feel empowered by them. It was just cool to see all this new technology and uh, the stuff that he brought to the table. I really enjoyed learning about that. I think that the Idea Fest is really beneficial for JCPS because I think it helps students realize what they're capable of and that if other kids can do these things, then they can do these things. JCPS students and teachers came together to hear what other students had to say. And for our kids, I'm Fern Creek correspondent Paige Sheeler. Our five-star high school career themes are all about real-life hands-on learning. Communication students at PRP got the opportunity of a lifetime when President Obama visited Louisville. They saw up close what it's like to be a journalist, plus the opportunity to cover the Commander-in-Chief. Recently, the PRP reporting lads had an opportunity to experience a visit from President Obama. On Thursday, April 2nd, Air Force One touched down for the first time in Kentucky, bringing President Barack Obama to Louisville, and some of us from PRP's reporting lab had the privilege of capturing the event. Though Obama's arrival was delayed three hours, we kept ourselves busy by talking to WLKY's Scott Reynolds and playing cards and interviewing WHAS 11's Brian Shaw. Uh, I think anytime the president comes to your city, it's a good thing. It's bringing attention to the city. Uh, bringing attention to what the city is doing in terms of technology and how this is a younger city and the types of jobs are here are technology based. Because the weather was bad, we had to capture the event from indoors, but luckily for us, the weather cleared up just in time for his departure. This is PRP correspondent Sydney Smith reporting for our kids. We have a lot more stories about our kids coming up. Stay with us. The portal is your online link to information about your child's grades, test scores, attendance, career choices, and much, much more. It's a fast and easy way to stay on top of what your child is doing in school. If your child's teacher has set up a virtual classroom, you can log on to JCPS online and access grades for class assignments or communicate directly with teachers. The Parent Portal offers a convenient way you can stay involved in your child's education. Both my parents have diabetes. Students really think that they are sort of invincible right now, and it's something that they'll think about in the future. I think that it's the actions and the decisions that we make right now that will really help us in the future and that will uh, determine whether we get diabetes or not. Hey kids, get out there, live a great life, but at the same time get to know the risk factors for diabetes and live a healthy lifestyle. Welcome back. You're watching Our Kids, sponsored by the Jefferson County Public Schools. Throughout the school year, we've showed you example after example 
of how the GE Foundation's $35 million commitment to JCPS has changed the way teachers teach and students learn. From staff developers to science modules, the partnership has transformed the classroom. We end our series by taking a look at the impact through the words of those who are reaping the benefits now and those who have been there from the very beginning. Did it grow? It did. Are you sure? Well, I think partnerships are powerful. It's the key not only to um, our students' success, but it's also the key to economic development and a, a community thriving. What I liked about the foundations is that the, the idea of going into and actually starting elementary and middle schools and starting to get some of the, the infusion of some of the newer ways to teach these things and make them interesting, make them fun, capture the, the eye, the heart, the imagination of a young student. In the classroom now, kids are acting like scientists. They're being scientific. So they're investigating, they're collecting their own data, and they're making sense of that. I like engineering. I mean, when I, wanna, when I grow up, I want to be a mechanical engineer because I like hands-on kind of things like we did in there. I think it's pretty fun to see if it fails, and you're like, oh, it failed. Uh, learn from that mistake and try again. When I came to the district, GE staff developers were very effective tools in the schools right where teachers need it, someone there who's helping you to become more effective. And we actually made that our model. So that started us, but now we have a goal clarity coach is what we now call it in every school. So we were able to take what we learned from the GE model and actually make, make every school better because of it. The most significant thing about uh, GE's uh, investment with developing futures is that um, it wasn't a quick fi fix. So we didn't focus on things that may just drop off once the grant drops off. The company made a major investment in, um, in public education and um, it was a long-term investment. Well the GE Foundation focused on the right thing, effective instruction. We focused on the right thing, effective instruction, helping students learn more. And we have been successful in meeting our Kentucky target two, two years in a row. We've increased the number of schools to 95 that met their target. But you don't increase your target without the right focus. And GE helped us focus on exactly the right thing. But if we can have a pocket of success, like we see in Louisville, it's something we know we can replicate elsewhere. So I think it's, it's the biggest impact of anything I've ever seen tried to be implemented in the system. And I, I can't imagine ever going back away from it. What we're hoping that the legacy is, is that it continues to build on leadership. It continues to build on innovation. Growing is like a living thing, actually getting bigger and bigger. And it continues to look at how they have moved an entire system to be focused on what, are, what is needed for the 21st century, and they continue to move forward and advance in that area. They are in no small part um, a reason why our, our achievement has gone up and that we're, as GE says in their own words, a moving and improving district. Dozens of lawyers throughout the community show just how much they care about our kids' financial future. CARE, which stands for Credit Abuse Resistance Education, pairs JCPS high school students with the Kentucky Bar Foundation and the bankruptcy section of the Louisville Bar Association to give students a first-hand lesson about the consequences of credit abuse from the judges and lawyers who work with those affected by it. If you guys flip over to page 22, this is some information on rent to own contracts, so if you guys get an apartment and you're furnishing it, this is one thing to keep in mind about the true cost of, of renting to own. I think that a lot of kids graduate from high school and they get into college or they get in the, out in the real world and they don't have the foundation to understand credit and understand what they're getting themselves into and they can get themselves into trouble very quickly. I got out um, learning about finances, how important they are going to be in my, uh, my life and there's just, it's, a lot, it's not like um, just making money and getting a job, you gotta, you know, budget your money and not just go and spend it on, you know, clothes and, you know, stuff for yourself. You gotta, you know, house and job and car payments and insurance and stuff. And you don't want to lend money to friends. You don't want to be the one who's putting everything on your credit card. Today I learned all about um, credit cards and the financial problems there is 
in life and how you can deal with them and how you can get away with basically living life and not being in debt. Sometimes, like, I'll be seeing, like, the car loans and, like, free, uh, the, what is it, the cash advance, like, free money now and stuff, or, like, yeah, stuff like that. I'd be, like, interested in it, but then I'd be thinking, I'd be, like, I'm not trying to do that because I know long term I'm going to be in debt or I'm going to have to pay on some money or something. That's why I always try to pay everything in cash. You know, we got somebody coming to us and talking about this, which is, you know, pretty cool because y'all didn't get that and we actually know what to expect when we get out there and know what to watch out for, for like scams and stuff like that. And I wasn't aware of like, you know, the payments. You could be the cash advances and all that. You could be paying on credit cards and what they can, you know, put you in big debt. Every presentation I've done with this, kids are always amazed with how much they actually end up paying for something. And so if they use credit to buy a pizza or if they use credit to buy shoes, they don't understand that if they're only paying the minimum amount due every month, that in fact by the time they've actually paid off that debt, they've paid substantially more than that product actually cost them. And so I think that that's where they get themselves into trouble because they may look at a pizza that's 20 bucks and they don't recognize that by the time they pay it off, it's actually $40 that they spent on it. And that type of behavior just snowballs. A lot of people don't know how to use their money wisely and that's what puts them into debt. So I wish everybody can learn and learn about this before they experience the hard truth about being in debt. Storm chasing may seem like fun, but this dangerous job has likely been responsible for saving many, many lives. Journalism students at Ballard High School got an up close look at a local storm chaser vehicle and all of its specialized equipment. Taylor Crane takes us inside. Springtime can bring severe weather. Tracking and even following storms is a life-saving adventure for some brave enthusiasts. John Humphreys is a storm chaser. He assists local TV station meteorologists with tracking tornadoes. Humphreys had the storm chaser vehicle on display for Ballard High School broadcasting students. It may look like an SUV on the outside, but the interior is equipped with advanced media technology. We've got five cameras total, uh, including the drone. Uh, there's two on the front, one for a talent. Uh, there's one that rotates on the top. Uh, there's one on the rear. Uh, and of course, one on the drone. Real-time video signals are streamed to the Weather Channel and other TV stations. Students were impressed with the technology. The vehicle has like many different cameras, so you could get like storms at different angles, you know, from the back, from the front, from the sides. It has a drone, so when you get too close, like you can't, you can't risk a human life. They have a hard time getting a lot of signals in a lot of places where weather tends to get bad and that they use a lot of different cameras um, and even sometimes they can even put them on a drone and I think that's super cool. Humphrey says he's chased about 20 to 30 severe storms a year in Kentucky and so far this spring he is staying busy. Uh, they're not all tornadic but you know any, anytime you have any severe hail or winds you know that counts as a severe weather. I'm Ballard correspondent Taylor Crane for Our Kids. Don't go away, we have a lot more stories about Our Kids coming up. Do you need help providing school clothes for your child? The 15th District PTA Clothing Assistance Program can help provide uniforms and other clothing. Make an appointment with the Family Youth Resource Center at your child's school. Donations of new and gently used uniforms and clothing are also accepted. Call 485-7062 or 485-7450 for more information. The portal is your online link for information about your child's grades, test scores, attendance, career choices, and much, much more. It's a fast and easy way to stay on top of what your child is doing in school. If your child's teacher has set up a virtual classroom, you can log on to JCPS Online and access grades for class assignments or communicate directly with teachers. The Parent Portal offers a convenient way you can stay involved in your child's education. Welcome back. You're watching Our Kids, sponsored by the Jefferson County Public Schools. Is your child kindergarten ready? JCPS launched a new website called Ready 4K to help parents get their children ready for kindergarten. The site is interactive and full of activities to engage kids so they can sharpen their skills as they prepare for school. It's fruit, 
So put it on the good side. We come here today to engage and interact with the activities of the family day. I have two little ones, Isaac, he's five, and Daniel. He's just two, but he's also learning, and I'm so happy and I'm so excited for that. The whole emphasis on this is parents as teachers. You know you hear that and it's a, it's a cliche, but it's absolutely 100% true. Right now, which number is seven? Four. It's very important and vital to a child for them to have those those basic skills that they need. Now I know like what kind of activities to do with them in the summer and they're learning. That helps me a lot. So many child are lost, you know, and they don't know, and then it's, it's not the school's fault. You also have to interact with the kids at home, too. That's what this does for you. It all puts it in a nice, neat package and tells you where to go and what you do with them. Looking again at the school readiness pentagon in the center, you will see the five domains of kindergarten readiness. Simply click on any of the colored sections to access resources related to that area. I didn't know about that website and probably I won't, I wouldn't know how to use it, but this morning I knew it. Look at this. I'm so happy that they have this website. It's something that they can do outside of school, during vacation. It actually gives you games you can play with your child. It has the math, it, uh, the diet, it has coloring. These resources include parent tips, online resources, videos. I live in a neighborhood with a lot of kids. I have five kids of my own. We get the kids together, we have those activities and play, those, play with those activities because it takes a village to raise a child. The Olmsted Academy South Girls Chorus premiered a newly commissioned composition by a renowned composer. The piece was written with an emphasis on women in history and women in music. Correspondent Alicia Cole has the story. We are here to celebrate um, Women's History Month and Music in Our Schools Month. We are celebrating women in music, women in visual art, women in science, women in math, basically any field. Um, we are celebrating the women that are the pioneers in that field. So um, I was really, really glad I got Malala because honestly, I didn't know much about her. I just knew she was the youngest person to win the Nobel Peace Prize. But when my teacher chose Malala for me, I, like, I went and researched her at home and I found out some amazing things about her. Every girl who have raised their voice for their rights. There are hundreds of human rights activists and social workers and um, we did a program called Composers in Schools in Concert where they pair up a school with a composer who's living, breathing, and working at this you know, current time. Her name is Ruth Elaine Schramm and she does a thing called Composers in Our Schools where she works with a school and she uh, creates and composes a song for them working with lyrics that they've made and we are the only middle school that she's ever worked with. It was a collaboration between my students and Miss Ruth Elaine Schramm. They actually heard some of the words that they wrote in their lyrics um, in the song that she wrote and even the melody, the face of courage, that came from one of my students. So when we heard the song, we couldn't believe that she had taken that little melody that my student had given her and all the lyrics that they had written and made it into one song. Music is everything, especially like orchestra pieces because we all play separately, but we all play together. And you know, when you come together as a team like that, it just makes the most amazing sound and it's just so much fun. This is PRP correspondent Alicia Coyer reporting for our kids. Farmer Elementary makes math exciting and interactive as students compete in their own version of the Olympics. Anisha Coulter has the details. When you first hear the word Olympics, you think of physical activities. However, students and staff at Farmer Elementary have put their own spin on things. Student teacher Emily Walls and other staff members created a way for students to work out their minds while competing in friendly mathematic competitions called the Math Olympics. When students arrived, they received an event card with instructions on where to go and the five different events they would be participating in. Each of the events were based on standards that the students had been learning in the classroom throughout the year. I definitely think that these events are really great and they really help children's learning. 
um, especially we had activity tonight that hit every uh, major component of Common Core mathematics. We had geometry, we had measurement, um, we had algebraic thinking, we had counting and cardinality. So th these activities were really great for kids, allowed them to practice some basic uh, math operations, and it was really great for them. And these are the kind of things kids need to do, get them excited about math, get them moving, and having fun. They make me want to learn by showing, like, it's learning in a fun way. The activities were challenging, and I think my favorite event was the curling. There were these targets, and they had numbers on them, and you had, just had bean bags, and you had a, like a fake thing that you would just do this, and right. it would go, you would push the bean bag, and it would, and whatever number it landed on, that was the number, and then you got, had to do it again, and then you had to multiply the two numbers you landed on. As students completed the events, they were awarded with a sticker on their event card. Once they received all five stickers, they were able to pick out a medal and stand on the podium with the school mascot in front of friends and family to take a Math Olympics championship picture. I really liked the um, broom hockey. The activities were a little bit challenging and my favorite event was broom hockey. For our kids, I'm Fern Creek correspondent Anissa Coulter. In Our Kids News, we'd like to congratulate the 16 student winners of the 2015 Vote Achievement Scholarships. This special award honors exceptional students throughout JCPS who have demonstrated high standards of scholarship, leadership, character, and citizenship. Each scholar receives a $10,000 college scholarship. And a big congrats also goes out to Deanna Ford at Cochrane Elementary. She was honored with the Excellence in Classroom and Educational Leadership Award. Congratulations. You are an Excel Award winner. Thank you. The Louisville Education and Employment Partnership Program is a nationally recognized high school dropout prevention program that helps students push towards the goal of graduating and preparing for the transition to college and the workforce. Their annual celebration recognizes student achievement as they name their students of the year. The LEAP program and my career planner have been there with me every step of the way. Along the way, they have helped me adjust to high school, make connections with my community and community <laughs> leaders, and open doors for me that I never would have found. Not too long ago, I was accepted to many schools close to home and also offered scholarships. With the help of many people, I nailed down to my final decision. I will be attending U of L with the Porter Scholarship. My mom is a LEAP alumni and also a previous student of the year from the class of 1999. Ms. Baxter first met me when I was a young baby, and my mom was attending the South Park Teenage Parent Program. Now, 16 years later, I'm in the same position as a LEAP student of the year as my mom. That's our show for today. We hope you've enjoyed it. You can find full episodes of Our Kids on the JCPS YouTube channel. Until next time, keep supporting Our Kids.